uh, discussion and a very uh, elaborate, distinguished panel uh, in front of me. I have the thankless job. Uh, I'm Joshua Walker. I'm a uh, international affairs fellow with the Council on Foreign Relations. I have the honor, uh, the privilege, and also the, the great fear of moderating a panel with such distinguished gentlemen that you see to my left and right. My job is simply to turn things over to them as quickly as possible and try to make this as interactive as possible. We're going to be focusing on Azerbaijan, the U.S.-Azerbaijan relationship, and the larger, broader implications, focusing on energy, trade, development, the different things that we all came to this conference for. So I'm going to start in the order uh, that I've been given. I'm going to start, and everyone's going to offer some introductory comments that are going to be under 10 minutes. You'll be seeing me pass notes to make sure that we keep it on time so we can have some questions from the audience uh, and have some interaction. But without further ado, I'd like to turn it to the Congressman Ted Poe uh, from Texas for his opening remarks. Congressman. Thank you, Josh. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here with you, especially with these distinguished uh, gentlemen on the panel. Uh, I'm Ted Poe. I am from uh, the state of Texas. Uh, and it's an honor to be here with you today. I serve on the Judiciary Committee and the Foreign Affairs Committee, and I'm chairman of the Subcommittee on Terrorism, Nonproliferation, and Trade. Uh, I come from Houston, Texas, uh, which we still consider to be the energy capital of the world, uh, and uh, represent 22% uh, of the nation's U.S. Uh, refineries uh, in my congressional district. So uh, energy is something that we do in Texas, and I'm proud to be uh, one of the Texas delegates, uh, uh, members of the U.S. House, that uh, strongly support uh, energy, all kinds of energy, everywhere. Uh, people have asked me, uh, uh, what do I, where do I think that we should, for example, drill for oil and natural gas? Uh, my answer is we should drill for oil and natural gas wherever there is oil and natural gas except cemeteries. Um, and in Texas, we know how to slant drill into a cemetery. So uh, I think you call it directional drilling. But anyway, that might tell you about my philosophy of, of energy, wherever it is in the world. You know, Azerbaijan is a, is a friend, a true friend, an ally of the United States. Uh, our uh, people work together in the boardroom and on the battlefield, and our governments are close allies, and I believe getting closer as allies. So true friendship, true connections. Uh, Texas especially is uh, close to Azerbaijan for a lot of reasons. On March the 6th, uh, the Texas legislature passed a resolution for Azerbaijan U.S. Friendship Day. Now, March 6th is a special day for Texans, historically. Uh, on March the 6th, 1836, uh, the Battle of the Alamo took place, where people who believed in freedom fought and all died for independence from Mexico, that Texas was seeking independence to be its own special, be its own country, which it was for nine years. Some say Texas is still a country, who knows? But that's March the 6th, and so I believe that that was uh, not just a coincidence that the Texas legislature passed uh, Azerbaijani and U.S. Friendship Day on March the 6th. Uh, the State Oil Company of Azerbaijan Republic has operations in Houston, my hometown, and many Texas-based oil companies op operate in Azerbaijan. Uh, I would invite all y'all to come down to Texas and visit. Now, let me give you a little language translation here. Y'all is singular. All y'all is plural. <laughs> so all y'all in Texan means all y'all come to Texas and uh, and visit uh, Houston especially. Um, last month, there's an, I heard of another example of us working together. In February, Azerbaijan launched its first telecommunication satellite, and that satellite was designed by Orbital Sciences Corporation, uh, which is uh, in Virginia. Uh, so uh, thank you for your hard work in being here uh, today. Uh, there's not a more critical area of cooperation between the U.S. and Azerbaijan than making sure our two nations are safe from those who want to do us harm. Uh, your cooperation has been more than just verbal cooperation and support. Uh, our troops have stood shoulder to shoulder uh, in Kosovo, Iraq, and now in Afghanistan. And on behalf of uh, not just Texans, but the American people, we thank you for not just orally supporting the United States, but doing it with your people and your soldiers. 
Uh, past 10 years, Azerbaijani troops have served in Afghanistan to fight the war on terror, and today there are 94 personnel from Azerbaijan there in Afghanistan. Uh, Azerbaijan is important in getting our troops and supplies safely to the region. Thousands of American planes fly over Azerbaijan on the way to Afghanistan, and virtually every U.S. military person deployed to Afghanistan has flown through Azerbaijan. Uh, Azerbaijan's role in the Northern Distribution Network has helped us get the supplies that our troops have needed uh, when uh, Pakistan cut off uh, our supply route. Uh, in my opinion, Pakistan is really no ally of the United States, but Azerbaijan stepped up and showed the world that we don't need Pakistan to win the war on terror in Azerbaijan or in Afghanistan. Uh, as we withdraw our troops and our equipment, mm -hmm. Azerbaijan will be a con continue to be an important ally of the United States. So, once again, America is grateful for your support. Uh, Azerbaijan is helping us fight terrorists in Afghanistan and terrorists in uh, Azerbaijan and other countries. Iran, Iran has its fingerprints on some of the mischief that's going on throughout the world. Uh, uh, Iran, for example, really doesn't like politically the ties Azerbaijan has with Israel. So in January of last year, you know, Iran tried to kill the Israeli ambassador in, to Azerbaijan and a local rabbi. Two months later in March, the police of Azerbaijan arrested 22 people in an Iranian back plot to kill an American and Israeli diplomats in Baku. Four years ago, Azerbaijan authorities thwarted a plan by agents of Iran and Hezbollah to, cut, to set off a car bomb near the Israeli embassy in Baku. So Iran still continues, and I think for some time will be the international mischief maker, to put it politely. So we must work together to uh, thwart terrorist activity wherever it occurs in the, in the world. Uh, stability is something I think is important for our development between our two countries. Azerbaijan is a stable country. Uh, stability is important not just on the political front, but it is important on the economic and business front as well. Thus, energy and the United States uh, working closely with Azerbaijan on energy security and production. One reason I think we're doing that and it's successful is because of the stability of Azerbaijan. It is a common strategic goal and interest uh, of our time for both of us to work on energy issues together. Uh, Azerbaijan's done a great job to develop its own uh, energy and oil industry. A million barrels a day of oil flow from Azerbaijan to Turkey and then to the other parts of the world. Uh, I personally and the United States officially supports uh, the Nabucco pipeline. It will be an important link between Azerbaijan and Europe and will help the West diversify its oil and its gas supplies so it's not dependent on just a single country. Uh, I'm also pleased to see that progress is being made uh, in this as a, real re as a reality. Cooperation agreement with the Trans-Anatolian pipeline will hopefully speed up development. The sooner this project can be completed, the sooner we can stop relying on really on unstable and unfriendly uh, regimes for our energy, whether it's Iran or Venezuela. Instead, we need to buy, the United States needs to buy from stable countries and allies like Azerbaijan. So long-term success of Azerbaijan is not just about developing energy. Uh, we develop our people, we are investing in our future and our children's future as well. Uh, the United States is committed to helping Azerbaijan grow its civil society and adopt democratic reforms. Democratic reforms are important to all democracies, and all countries who have a democracy have challenges about human rights, democratic reforms, and the United States stands ready and is willing uh, through the State Department and other agencies to help Azerbaijan with those issues. So, Azerbaijan-U.S. partnership is strong. We have a, come a long way in the last 20 years, and I am sure that in the next 20 years, it'll be even stronger relationship between Azerbaijan and the United States, both politically, diplomatically, and in the energy sector as well. And thank you very much, all y'all. <laughs>
uh, not only a, a scholar of the area, but also the chairman of both the international and inner uh, parliamentary relations, uh, the Honorable Samad Sayadil. Please. Thank you very much. Uh, with my great pleasure, I'm here today, and uh, I'm completely agree with previous speakers and with each his words, word, but only one about the capital of the oil. <laughs> capital of the oil goes to Baku. Uh -oh. And I hope that in the nearest future, the world will have two capitals, well, <laughs> Houston and Baku. Ladies and gentlemen, today is really the honor for me to be here together with my friends and to speak about Azerbaijan. And I want to start my presentation with the words of the president of my country. And he said, we see Azerbaijan as a modern and democratic country with consolidated rule of law, strong social policy, well-developed economy, and with a solid position in the region. Country profile, you know Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is not so big country, and uh, nine and a half million population in Azerbaijan, unfortunately, 20% of our territory is still under occupation. But despite of this fact, Azerbaijan is flourishing. And especially Baku city. Baku became a real capital of the world, a real oil capital, but capital of beauty. Today, buildings like Mushroom are build, built in my capital, and we are so proud that different companies, different uh, organizations today located in the capital of Azerbaijan. Not only capital of Azerbaijan, but the government has decided to improve the regions of Azerbaijan. And today, government has approximately 200 programs to develop the region of Azerbaijan. Sheki region, Gabala region, Narlankaran region beca became a place of the touristic, a touristic place and so attractable for, the, uh, for our guests. Today, uh, I want to give you some real facts about the economic development in Azerbaijan. In 2013, the real GDP tripled in comparison in 2003. And today, approximately 70, 75 percent of the South Caucasian economy is in the hands of Azerbaijan. The country strategic exchange revenues increased more than 22 times in the last eight years and reached approximately $41 billion. Very important for us, the level of poverty. And the level of poverty has dropped from 49% uh, in 2000 to approximately 7% in 2012. Azerbaijan today achievements has also recognized by the rating agencies. Fitch rating, Moody's, Standard and Poor, and Poor. Azerbaijan has left the group of countries with average human development to join the high human development category. Also with World Bank, we have special relationships. And in 2008, World Bank gave us information that Azerbaijan is one of the 10 countries that had been achieved high economic reforms within the year. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, today, oil and gas sector continue to play an important role in the development of Azerbaijan economic potential. And you can see, together with Georgia and together with Turkey, together with United States of America, Today we have Baku Tbilisi Jehan, Baku Tbilisi Erzurum, and we are able to deliver our gas and oil to the Europe and to the rest of the world, which gave us possibility to be an independent, which gave us possibility to be here and to think about the future of my nation. This is the current situation which we have. But of course, we are thinking about the future. And from this point of view, very important project is a TANAP project. That's a project we, which we, together with our friends from Turkey and Georgia, are going to implement in the nearest future. And very important that taking into account that economic crisis is covering the Europe, we, together with Turkey, are ready to invest our money in this project. And being this, doing this, we bringing security not only to our geography, but to the Europe. And today, this is priority for Azerbaijan, and I think this is a very essential part of our South Corridor 
uh, energy, South Energy Corridor, which is being implemented. Today, Azerbaijan is ready not only to build these pipelines, but at the same time, railway between Baku, uh, Tbilisi, and Kars, which connected Central Asia countries with the Europe. Very important project together with all our pipelines. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, not only oil and gas are important for Azerbaijani economy, but non-oil sector. And my friend just recently mentioned that telecommunication is one of the main economic sector, became main economic sector in Azerbaijan. And in February, we launched our satellite to the space, which is really very important. Non-oil economy, not oil sphere in Azerbaijan, very important. Within a very short period of time, over 400 medical institutions have been built in Azerbaijan. This is very important for, for our population. And, and together with uh, non-oil sector, political situation, number of registered political parties, uh, we have uh, representative of oppositional parties in the parliament. We have 11 parties in the parliament. I am so proud. I am from ruling party, presenting my country, and we came together with Professor Mollazadeh, who represented the oppositional party at my parliament, and he is a leader of Democratic Reform Party in our, at our parliament. Very important part of our policy is a gender policy, and you can see the figures. Actually, today we have approximately 20% members of the parliament are women. And I'm so proud that together with me today here at this conference, two ladies, members of our parliament, are taking part. They're sitting on the front table here. Welcome to this convention. <laughs> ladies, ladies, and, ladies and gentlemen, I have to say that the majority, the vast majority of the humanitarian initiatives in Azerbaijan leading by First Lady. Heydar Aliyev Foundation has been created for this purpose and she is a member of the uh, parliament and she is leading the, this foundation and she is doing a great job for Azerbaijan. I don't want to use your time because speakers have been waiting for me and just presenting you some um, vision to future, main goals. We have our goal to, goals to be together with the rest of the civilized world. We came to United States of America because Azerbaijan is a partner of United States of America. And today Azerbaijan is an opening to the rest of the world and we know that in nearest future we will be able to do much more than we have done in the past. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Let me now turn it over to the Deputy Assistant Secretary of State from the Bureau of European and Eurasian Affairs, uh, Eric Rubin. Thank you very much, Josh, and I want to thank TAA and the other sponsors. Um, I'd like to recognize my fellow panelists, including Chairman Poe and Chairman Seedov, and Ambassador Solomonov, and the other distinguished panelists and guests here today. Um, we're very glad to have this opportunity to come together uh, to talk about a subject that we consider very, very important, and that is Azerbaijan and the U.S.-Azerbaijani relationship. And let me start out by saying uh, the simple sentence that we consider Azerbaijan to be very important. Uh, we value our relationship with Azerbaijan and we believe it is important to both countries in many ways. Obviously, uh, geostrategically, Azerbaijan uh, did not choose its location, but it finds itself in an absolutely critical location uh, straddling uh, two continents. Uh, at the same time, energy has been a focus of our relationship, a subject I will address uh, in a little more detail. Uh, and remains a very, very important focus. Uh, I personally will not take sides in the question of which is the oil capital of the world. That is a dangerous question to take sides in, except to say uh, I'm always going to be on the American side at the end of the day. Um, I think it's very, very important to also recognize the importance of Azerbaijan as a country, as a society that set its path on a course toward independence, toward sovereignty, and choosing its own future uh, 22 years ago now. Uh, and has continued on that path and has had the support of the United States government and the American people in that path uh, since it, it launched itself uh, on the course to independence and sovereignty. I was privileged to be a member of our team in opening relations with Azerbaijan uh, at the end of 1991 and the beginning of 1992, along with the other uh, former republics of the former Soviet Union. Uh, looking back on those days, looking back on how precarious things were, uh, I would echo 
uh, the previous panelists in remarking and stating how truly uh, uh, unimaginable the progress that has been achieved today was back then in 1991. It, it would have been hard to even describe it to people who were living through the painful events of that period. And I think looking back with that as our perspective, understanding how far uh, Azerbaijan has come uh, in these two decades plus of independence, uh, let me just talk a little bit about the key areas of our relationship and what we see uh, as priorities going forward. Uh, first of all, uh, the, the three main pillars of our relationship remain uh, security, energy, and political and economic reform. Uh, we've worked very closely with Azerbaijan on regional and global security issues. Uh, I would uh, echo Chairman Poe's uh, remarks uh, expressing recognition and appreciation for the role that Azerbaijan has paid in support, uh, played in supporting the NATO ISAF effort in Afghanistan and supporting the Northern Distribution Network. Uh, as a partner in helping to stabilize a very unstable part of the globe. Uh, we've also worked very closely together uh, with uh, Azerbaijan uh, in maritime surveillance, maritime counterterrorism, uh, an area that is becoming increasingly important in the Caspian uh, and something that I think is of critical importance to Azerbaijan's own security and future. Uh, we have worked very closely with Azerbaijan and the UN Security Council, uh, where Azerbaijan is now in its second year of serving as a non-permanent member and has displayed a real commitment to enhancing global security uh, and also to enforcing international sanctions against Iran. And this has been, I think, a very, very positive record of our cooperation on security issues that affect the entire planet and also on Azerbaijan's commitment uh, to playing a role going beyond its borders. Uh, I would also note that Azerbaijan still has 94 troops serving in Afghanistan under Turkish command uh, in Kabul, and also for the role that Azerbaijani uh, soldiers and police have played in the international effort in Kosovo and Iraq, serving side by side with our soldiers and police trainers. Uh, let me talk a little more about some of the other, uh, I think, hopeful aspects of our relationship. One of them is energy, and uh, starting back in the early days of looking to try to diversify uh, energy supply, energy choices for Europe, uh, Azerbaijan played an absolutely central role. Uh, we have an ambassador in Baku today, Dick Morningstar, who was one of our original uh, coordinators of the project to help support what became uh, the baku Jehan pipeline. And today it's a reality and there are new projects, big projects that are coming online and that are in the planning stages as well. Uh, for us, the idea of a southern corridor is one of our top energy security priorities. Uh, we have not uh, picked favorites and as a matter of fact, have supported both the Nabucco West project and the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline project. Uh, I personally had the opportunity to be in Athens for the signing of the Trans-Adriatic Pipeline Agreement, and I was pleased to be there, but uh, our view is that any project that delivers diversified gas options for European countries is positive for all concerned. And uh, we will continue to, to be supportive of that and to support the role that Azerbaijan plays uh, as an energy supplier and also as a policymaker for diversifying energy supplies. We, over the years, have uh, worked very closely to support uh, various aspects of Azerbaijan's national goals uh, and also to support areas of mutual interest uh, through our programs of partnership and cooperation. Uh, these include uh, assistance that's targeted on encouraging uh, reforms that promote regional security, the development of democratic institutions and processes, and sustainable broad-based economic growth. Uh, we've been working to increase civic participation in public policy making and oversight uh, promoting good governance and encouraging democratic reforms, working very closely with the government uh, as well as with non-governmental organizations and partners. Uh, we have also uh, worked very closely over the past two dec decades to help Azerbaijan plan for sustainable non-oil sector growth of the economy, which is critical to its economic future. Uh, we believe very, very strongly that uh, business the business environment, investor confidence, is also very, very important. And one of the areas that we've been working on uh, is precisely that through a partnership that Azerbaijan signed with the U.S. Agency for International Development in 2009, uh, including areas such as trade and investment, private sector competitiveness, public sector expenditures, and socioeconomic development. 
Uh, in addition, we've been working to help support uh, civil society programs, believing that internal reform, both human rights and democracy, as expressed by President Aliyev uh, in his recent remarks, uh, are critical to securing Azerbaijan's future, uh, to its growth, to its strength as a society. And we're committed to our support for the development of a vibrant civil society in Azerbaijan. And we're also committed to doing everything we can to help Azerbaijan build uh, a rule of law uh, society based on transparency. Uh, this is also critical to investor confidence, to business confidence, knowing that there's a legal system uh, that is uh, impartial uh, and uh, transparent. And this is something that will continue to be a major priority of ours. Uh, we believe that as Azer Azerbaijan grows uh, stronger, uh, as its society becomes uh, uh, stronger, as the standard of living continues to rise, uh, including the areas of uh, socioeconomic progress, uh, that uh, was, were mentioned by Chairman Saidov. Uh, we believe it's also important that it continue to become more open and there continue to be opportunities for citizens to contribute to the development of the society. Uh, this is, a, I think, a very brief uh, overview of the areas that we're working with Azerbaijan. Uh, there are many areas uh, that are coming in future as well. This is a dynamic relationship. This is a relationship uh, that we value deeply. Uh, and it is a relationship that we believe has benefited both our societies greatly over the past two decades. Uh, I'd like to end by reiterating uh, the unwavering support of the United States for Azerbaijan's uh, security, independence, and sovereignty, uh, a commitment that has not wavered over the past 21 years, as well as our commitment to ensuring a just, fair, and lasting settlement to the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, which has gone on for way too long uh, with way too much human suffering. And let me just uh, end with a note on that. Uh, I, we believe very strongly that the status quo uh, is not acceptable, it's not stable, it's not viable, and it does not address uh, the enormous human suffering that this conflict has caused over the past 20 years. Uh, that is why we are absolutely committed to working uh, with our Minsk Group uh, co-chair partners, Russia and France, uh, to help uh, resolve this conflict and to develop ideas that could help uh, bring about a peaceful resolution. Uh, we've encouraged both Azerbaijan and Armenia uh, to make the difficult decisions that will have to be made to find uh, a just settlement uh, for both sides beyond the current status quo. Uh, we will continue to work with, with uh, both sides to try to develop new approaches, new ways uh, to help uh, move beyond the current situation uh, to ensure that there are not further outbreaks of violence, and most importantly, uh, to find a way to, to finally address uh, the human suffering. So this is a commitment that uh, I personally make, but also on behalf of the United States, uh, we make uh, very, very firmly and with great conviction that a settlement is possible and that a better future for all concerned is possible. Uh, with that, let me thank you for your attention, and uh, thank you very much for inviting me to join you here today. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Assistant Secretary Rubin. Let me turn it over to the ambassador uh, who sits to my immediate left, Ellen Soleimanov, who is no stranger to this country, to this town, and probably one of the best friends that this town has had for Azerbaijan-U.S. relations. So without further ado, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you. Let me also go to her. Oh, it's good morning still, everybody. Uh, it's good to be at this panel, and I'll try to speak as briefly as possible because uh, this panel is much more intelligent more the members are than I am, so I'll try to keep it short. Uh, it's great to be here. I congratulate TAA on a great panel, uh, panels and a great conference put together. It's a great achievement, and Mr. Taban here has done a great job with his colleagues. Thank you very much for doing that. I would like to recognize, of course, the great members of our panel. Thank you for being here. Uh, members of the Azerbaijani delegation, which includes members of the parliament and the representative of the state oil company of Azerbaijan. They had an excellent trip. I joined part of it in Texas. It was a very successful trip. I would also like to recognize our good friends from Turkey and our very good friend, uh, I see the ambassador from Kazakhstan is here. Thank you for joining us. I saw ambassador, earlier ambassador of Kyrgyzstan. I know he is somewhere in the vicinity and that's the story of our lives. We always know our brothers are somewhere in the vicinity, not too far from us. That's always good. Also, of course, I would like to recognize the uh, president of Turksoy, uh, Mr. Kassanov. Thank you very much for joining us. and this and the super Turkic ambassador, Halil Akinci, who is here, who unites all of the Turkic nations in their quest for 
uh, for common uh, objectives. It's good to have you all here. Um, Mr. Paul pointed out something which is very interesting. I didn't fully realize that, that March 6th was a day of Alamo. When we were at the governor's uh, mansion in, um, I have this excellent event on the, on the capital, the state capital in Austin, I could feel the spirit of Alamo. First of all, I was given the flag of Texas. It was a very great honor for me. But most importantly, there you felt the, that Azerbaijan stands very much committed to its independent decision making and its sovereign decision making in the region where that is uh, becoming less of a popular, let's say, uh, and common instance. And that's a very important thing because Azerbaijan is very committed, once again, to its independent decision making, to its sovereignty, and it will co that commitment is very important for us. I felt it very strongly in Alamo, uh, so I think that there was this coincidence. I say from the outset, and I would like to thank um, uh, Secretary uh, Rubin for speaking here, because the achievements of Azerbaijan over the 20, last 22 years will not be possible without the support from the United States of America. We are very grateful, and we know and understand that the achievements of Azerbaijan's independence and sovereignty do come also with a contribution from our American friends who stood by us and made so much uh, in making Azerbaijan a success today. And that's an important element of that. That defines why Azerbaijan and the United States are such a good partners in doing so many things in security, in energy development, and all this. Now look, the most important project in the region, and I keep repeating that, the most important and the most successful project in the region, the East-West uh, East -West Energy Corridor, which now is called Southern uh, Energy Corridor for Europe, was developed to get jointly with Azerbaijan, Georgia, and Turkey with the great support of the United States of America, which shows which shows that in order to get things done in our region, U.S. support is very important. And today it's not, of course, limited only to oil. Now we're talking about uh, natural gas pipelines with TANAP, Trans-Anatolian pipeline. We speak about TASIM, which is Trans-Eurasian um, fiber optic cable. We talk about uh, uh, Bakut Bilisi cars railways. So it's developing into a very new partnership. But once again, U.S. commitment and U.S. interest in the region is very important. Now, uh, during the Clinton administration, that commitment was very, very visible. And I'm very grateful that just before leaving office, uh, Secretary Clinton spoke about energy security and mentioned specifically the Southern Corridor as being an important part of, the, of cooperation in the region. Why this is important? Because if you look at our region today, and we all mentioned uh, the big success of Azerbaijan being sitting at the United Nations Security Council as a non-permanent member. That's a big achievement for Azerbaijan. But now think for, the, think for a second about this. As a, as a non-permanent member of the United Nations Security Council, Azerbaijan has to deal with the major issues of global security. Azerbaijan addresses and gets involved in the issues ranging from South Sudan to Mali to Syria to Libya, everywhere. And we know how important it is to implement the United Nations Security Council resolutions. Yet, there is a strange dichotomy for us. At the same time, this month, well, this coming month in April, will mark 20 years, 20 years, since adoption of the United Nations Security Council resolutions on, Azerbaijan, uh, on Armenia Azerbaijan conflict around Nagorno Karabakh. And none of those resolutions has been implemented. So now, imagine how my senior colleague, Ambassador Mehdi feels, every time he deals with other conflicts, which he is demanded and requested to deal immediately with, and our own issue is being disregarded, because 20 years since occupation of Kalbajar, since adoption of the United Nations Security Council resolutions, nothing has happened, exactly 20 years. Now think about that, that's a very serious issue. And I know that uh, Secretary Rubin mentioned here that we need to move and that status quo is not uh, acceptable and we need to move forward. And I call on all Americans present here to support the efforts of our good friends at the State Department and help them by at least finally appointing a high-level envoy for Armenia-Azerbaijan talks, because at this point, there is no even full-time negotiator 
uh, who, is, who represent the American side. And I think that's an important, uh, that is an important factor for us. And I, uh, and I know the workload on the, on the bureau uh, which uh, Mr. Rubin represents is already that heavy that we don't want to put the conflict resolution on them um, in addition to that. Let me um, say something that if you look at our region and you look at the successful projects, the rec a recipe for this project is very simple. It's actually a quite simple recipe. It is Azerbaijan working together with Georgia with a strong support and in partnership with Turkey with the support of the United States of America. That's how it works. That's how it succeeds. And I don't want to go in a, in a folk sayings, but if it ain't broken, why, why not to repeat it? It's actually a very good model. And together with Turkey, to, in our partnership with Georgia, with the support of the United States of America, this region has succeeded. That vision for the region, for a greater success, which have, when will it resolve the issue of Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict, will include all members of, the, of our region, including Armenia, of course, is a vision which has been articulated in Azerbaijan by our late president, Heydar Aliyev, who put together that vision forward, and we've been working on that. So our goal is to bring Armenia on board as a result of the resolution of this conflict. And I think that's a very important part of, uh, of our vision. It's a very important part of the partnership with developing the region. And I think both, once again, U.S. support, of course, Georgia's commitment to this East-West project, and Turkish uh, participation and leadership are very important factors to that. Now, I want to say something which um, is almost a personal matter. When, you, when we have a failure of something, we like to associate that with a name. But when we have success, we usually never say whose success it is. Well, the success and the vision of Azerbaijan and what Azerbaijan is doing today is not an accident. It is a result of a deliberate policy of the leadership of Azerbaijan under President Ilham Aliyev. That is partly his success, the success of the people of Azerbaijan, but under his leadership. So I say, in all fairness, if we associate failures with names, we should also associate success with the policy of Ilham Aliyev today, who leads my country and leads it correctly, in a correct uh, direction. I think that's a very important part of it. So on the final point, uh, I don't want to take sides on the, once again, Baku and uh, Houston issue, especially since I was just back in Houston. But uh, I think we found a very good solution to that. Baku and Houston are sister cities uh, and has been sister, have been sister cities for a long time. And that's a good solution. So if we can't decide which one is the capital um, of the or energy capital of the world, maybe we could bring them together to a partnership. And I think that's the best solution to go. And at this, I think I should stop. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. We're going to turn to... Uh, David Merkel, who comes from both uh, with deep experience being a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of State and also uh, as a former National Security uh, Advisor. David, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, when Joshua said we had uh, 10 minutes uh, up at the podium, uh, I said, Joshua, how in the world uh, can I say everything I know in 10 minutes? And he said, speak very, very slowly. So. <laughs> With, uh, with Eric and Aline going through the list of uh, areas of engagement, uh, I'd like to touch on two points. Uh, one, U.S. foreign policy, uh, specifically as it relates to um, our relationship with Azerbaijan. And second, energy security, very briefly, um, specifically um, energy security as it relates to European demand and Caspian supply. Um, when, when we look at foreign policy, um, it's, it's through a, a type of lens. Uh, sometimes that lens is clouded with uh, our own prejudice or our own uh, experiences. Sometimes it's very narrow, sometimes it's broader. Um, but when we move around the lens of U.S. foreign policy priorities, and we look at this, um, both what has been our priority in the last 20 years, today and into the future, uh, to me, it seems time and again that Azerbaijan comes into focus. Uh, if we think about our past, the breakup of the Soviet Union, um, obviously um, we undervalued uh, the violence that happened in the closing days of Gorbachev uh, in Azerbaijan, being more focused on, on Central Europe and the, and the Baltic states. 
Um, we looked at a, through a very wide lens and saw the breakup of the Soviet Union uh, as a peaceful breakup. If you were in Azerbaijan or Turkmenistan uh, and that was your focus, it wouldn't look so peaceful. Um, but Azerbaijan played a very, very important role. The ambassador mentioned that the United States helped uh, Azerbaijan in some of its elements of, of, of sovereignty. Uh, but it's also Azerbaijan that played a very large role in, in Russia not being able to exert its influence over the former countries of the Soviet Union uh, through Guam uh, and other organizations. Obviously, uh, the baku tbilisi Shehan pipeline uh, was an element of sovereignty. Um, and it, it got to the point where uh, energy um, Azerbaijan gave a shot in the arm at different times to Berlin and Brussels about exercising their own sovereignty. Um, and Azerbaijan uh, wanted the same thing that its neighbors and I think the United States and Brussels want, which is for Moscow to look at these countries as neighbors uh, and not uh, as a master. Um, Azerbaijan has come into focus, as has been mentioned before, uh, in the war on terrorism. Um, and that brings us to today, and I'd like to kind of launch off the point uh, that the ambassador mentioned, which is when we look at the United States foreign policy priorities, Iran, Afghanistan, Syria, even North Korea, um, again, Azerbaijan comes into focus. Um, Baku is only 312 miles from Tehran. Uh, Azerbaijan is 350 miles from Syria. Um, Baku is about 780 miles from Herat, Afghanistan, uh, and 718 from the Persian Gulf. Um, to put those in perspective, the baku tbilisi Shehan pipeline is about 1,110 miles. Um, those of you who traveled from Los Angeles to be here traveled about 2,300 miles, and the difference between the twin energy capitals of Houston and Baku is about 7,000 miles. So, the current issues of Iran going nuclear is a very, very important issue um, for Azerbaijan, the region, and, and obviously the global community. Um, our former Secretary of Defense, Panetta, uh, said that he thought that, that Iran would have the elements of a bomb uh, six months. He said that a little over six months ago. Um, the Prime Minister of Iran spoke at the United Nations, Secur or the United States Nations General Assembly uh, about that concern. So th these are elements that are very much focused on the global agenda. Um, there was a meeting between a very high-ranking U.S. official and a high-ranking Azeri official, and the U.S. official was trying to point out some time ago um, how a nuclear Iran would be a global security issue. And the uh, Azeri figure said, if you border Iran, a conventional Iran is an important issue and one that needs to be addressed. Um, obviously, the, um, uh, the issue is of importance uh, for the United States, for some of our key allies in the region, uh, Israel. Uh, the ambassador spoke on, um, at the APAC conference, and to my um, um, expectation was criticized by Iran. Um, but to my great regret, was um, criticized by some Americans uh, here um, from the Armenian diaspora, uh, something that, that I, I, I think I don't even understand uh, why a ally of the United States uh, speaking on the importance of an issue here in Washington would be criticized by um, uh, Americans. Obviously, Afghanistan is key to, Af obviously, Azerbaijan is key to Afghanistan, has been mentioned before and its role in the UN Security Council uh, make it so important um, with regard to um, uh, Syria and, uh, and um, North Korea. Now, when you're focusing on different things, uh, from time to time you need to focus in as well. And um, my great appreciation for Eric being here um, uh, is, is going to temper my criticism, but I still want to point out uh, an area where I think the United States uh, can do better on this. Um, to demonstrate to a country that we um, share not just what's important to us and them, energy, security, 
um, business and, and political reform, but also take seriously an issue that is vital to them. Um, we need to focus in on Nagorno-Karabakh. Um, the ambassador mentioned uh, the need for a, uh, a high-level envoy. I think that is an excellent point. Um, I, I think that uh, the fact that nothing has happened on this issue uh, in over a year and a half since Kazan uh, is, is tragic. And from someone who sat in the State Department day-to-day um, -day managing relations with Russia and Georgia and saw that war happen, uh, I always think it's a, a, an important thing uh, to focus on frozen conflicts uh, at least they not say frozen. But also, uh, Azerbaijan is an important ally, and we need to demonstrate that what's important to Azerbaijan is also important uh, to us. Now, my concern, rather than focusing in on Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, my concern is that the Obama administration may, in fact, focus in on Moscow and double down on the Russia reset. Um, it was obviously, um, there was a desire and a need to improve our bilateral relationship with Russia following the Bush administration. Um, but I think, in my opinion, the way it was gone about was simplistic, naive, and, and unproductive. And I'm not surprised at the situation we are in now. Um, but my fear is, with Kerry and a new team, um, that um, the um, conclusion will be uh, to go ahead and, and double down on the reset in order to get Russia's cooperation uh, on um, Iran and Syria. Now, just a moment on, on Caspian gas uh, to Europe. Obviously, the Southern Corridor is a success. Uh, there's been a lot of great work in Brussels and Baku uh, to make that a success. Um, here in the United States, we're uh, heavy with excitement about the exportation of, of liquefied natural gas and the United States being able to export something other than KPMG consultants, uh, but actually export something. Um, and I think that, that um, um, with that, um, we have to look at the Trans-Caspian. And I think the Trans-Caspian is not a success. Uh, I think um, our, our colleagues in another room focusing on Turkmenistan uh, really need to look at the possibility of, of Turkmenistan and gas uh, getting shut in. There's a couple of major U.S. corporations now there looking at onshore resources. Um, but just the way things are happening and the fact that Azerbaijan looks very likely to be able to fill uh, its own southern corridor, uh, I think the Turkmen might have moved a little bit slow. That's not to say that the very positive work uh, between the president of Azerbaijan and the president of Turkmenistan improving relations uh, is not valued and, and will have great uh, benefit to both countries. Um, but it, it demonstrates the wisdom uh, of President Aliyev in, in moving aggressively and demonstrating leadership uh, and a commitment to have its gas for Europe uh, earlier on that I think will very much pay off uh, for Azerbaijan and Europe. Thank you. Thank you, David. Last but certainly not least, we have uh, Mike uh, McMahon, who's actually a former congressman from New York and a New Yorker uh, always, but also I've had the privilege to travel with him to the region, so I'm excited to hear what you have to say, Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Walker, uh, and good day, everyone. Uh, it's really my privilege and honor to be here uh, and perhaps providing a perspective of someone who sat on that end of the table with Congressman Poe at one point, and now I sit on this end of the table as a private uh, American citizen, but certainly one who is deeply interested uh, in this uh, important region of the world, and in particular, Azerbaijan. Now, uh, I also have to be a little bit of a troublemaker because uh, throughout this whole session, there's been this ongoing sort of bilateral confrontation between uh, Houston and Baku over which is the oil capital of the world. Uh, and uh, I have to say that uh, Ambassador Umarov from Kazakhstan is sitting there and every time it's mentioned, he's sort of shaking his head and saying, wait a second, uh, you guys, uh, Astana uh, and Kazakhstan should certainly be in the mix. So let's say that we have a three-way uh, battle right now uh, for the oil and energy uh, production capitals uh, of the world. Uh, clearly, when you speak last, it, it, it's a cliche to say it, but uh, these very uh, uh, prominent and, and, and in, uh, um, intelligent uh, and very experienced uh, diplomats uh, uh, and representatives have spoken to the issues, I think, that are important for uh, this session. Uh, other than I just want to be sure that we uh, express to those who have organized uh, this very important conference uh, that we thank them, and for, certainly from the TAA, 
uh, Farouk Taban and Marat Akis. We want to thank them and all their staff because not only have they focused us on the importance of the relationship between the United States and Turkey, but the broader region, which we don't always focus on so much here in Washington, the Turkic countries uh, that uh, stretch into Eurasia and how important they are to us. Uh, also to thank Fevzi Bilgin, the doctor who's sort of organizing all that goes on here. Uh, and my, a special thanks to Kamal Akuz from the Turkoy uh, Association that invited me to be here today uh, to be part of this um, discussion. Okay, <clears throat> so as an American, let me say, we've heard just about everything, but there's one thing that really troubles me. Because throughout the whole session, we've heard how important Azerbaijan is from her geography, uh, from her natural resources, uh, from her history of being a very close ally to the United States, the fact that she holds the key really to energy security for Turkey and the Southern Corridor and for our, our very important allies in Europe and how important that is uh, to the United States. Her soldiers stand by us side by side in Afghanistan. She has become a very important ally uh, to our very important ally, Israel, in both di diplomatic ways and in ways of business. Her people uh, are very close in our hearts to the American people. I saw this when I uh, visited uh, last fall uh, to Azerbaijan. Yet, as was discussed, one-sixth of the uh, Azerbaijani people are displaced from their, from their homeland. And at the same time, here in Washington, Azerbaijan is not treated equally to the other nations of the region and the other nations of the world. And in particular, and I know that it sometimes is a moot point, but it has to be spoken to, the existence of Section 907 uh, in the Freedom Support Act continues to be a message from Congress that Azerbaijan is somehow not an equal partner with us, yet we hear all of this discussion and all this talk about how important she is. And we saw not too long ago how the American ambassador appointed by the president could not be seated uh, in Baku because of the domestic politics here in Washington. So let me just add to the mix of the things that we have to discuss as we, as we say to Azerbaijan, yes, you are our important partner. Yes, you sit in the United Nations on the Security Council and represent uh, all democracies around the world in what you do. And yes, at home, as you continue to grow, and as was mentioned, into a modern democracy and face the growing pains that you have, and yes, you are our important partner, let us resolve that we make sure that here in Washington that that message is resolute, that uh, Section 907 uh, be removed from the act, uh, and that we continue to treat Azerbaijan the way that she should be treated. Thank you very much. I look forward to the discussion. Thank you, Mike. I think the, the, the beauty here of Mike giving us these extra few minutes is we're going to have time for question and answers. And I always know how difficult this is. When I look out, whether it's a classroom or, or a conference like this, no one wants to be the first person to put their hand up. So I'm going to start asking questions uh, in the meantime until I see hands that will start rescuing. So if you would just put your hand up, I'll get as many as I can in so we can have them. But let me just start with a broader uh, question. We've heard a lot about uh, the, the major issue that divides our panel clearly is about the oil capitals of the world. I think that there's a great divide even within this country, meaning last time we had this conference last year, uh, a governor from Mississippi stood up and talked about his state being the real capital. So I think that we're not going to resolve that anytime today. But I want to talk about some of the things uh, that were mentioned and kind of tease out from, from our panelists and have them hold on to that thought as I go to the, the audience so we can get as many of your thoughts and ideas in. We heard a lot about natural resources. We heard a lot about the importance of natural resources in this relationship. We heard a lot about strategic relationships, but I think Mike kind of ended on the last note that I want to start with. What about the other natural resources that are not energy related? What about the people? What about the people to people relations? What can we, and I think particularly looking out into the room, those that are already kind of, I'm preaching to the choir in many ways, these are not, these are all friends in many ways. What can, from the panel's perspective and your official positions, these individuals do to help strengthen the relationship? And I think one of them has been already given to us uh, as a result of this conference. Thinking just about Azerbaijan, just about Kazakhstan, just about Turkey, any of these particular countries on their own may not be as strong as putting them all together. And so even the concept of having the Turkic world or even having the Turkic-American alliance is an interesting perspective. And so I'm curious about the panelists' perspectives on what that might mean. And second of all, before I go to the audience, the importance of the next generation, because we're talking about regions of the world where more than 70% of the population are under the age of 30. And I think 
particularly being focused on this uh, youth bulge and thinking about where we can think about the next generation of jobs, the next thing. And so thinking about the telecommunications piece that we heard about, the other pieces that go beyond oil, that go beyond, because these are resources that in many ways countries are blessed with, but they're not infinite. So the question is, what does the next century look like? What does the next millennia look like? And when we think about regions of the world that have always been both on the borderlands at some points in time, but have always been central to history, what can uh, we as individuals, both in the United States, those of us who may be Turkic American, those who are American who are friends of Azerbaijan, can we put it in a broader context? What would you as panelists offer uh, to that set of questions that I've just kind of thrown out there? I see one question right over here, and we'll start right over here. We well, yes, with you, sir. I'm going to take two or three questions. If you can just keep your comments uh, into a question, so there's a question at the end, and just identify yourself. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, I'm Kamal Bayolo. I'm the resident scholar on the Middle East, North Africa, and Islamic studies at the National War College, and I'm actually on loan right now to the State Department. But I'm not speaking on behalf of either. Uh, my question is very simple and direct. I've been reading a lot about, in essence, that Azerbaijan has impeded relations between Turkey and Armenia because of the issue of Nagorno-Karabakh. I was, was wondering if uh, Mr. Rubin or... Uh, uh, His Excellency Ambassador Salmanatov could actually address these issues. Has really uh, Azerbaijan been a hindrance to normalization of relations between Armenia and Turkey? I saw another hand right behind you, sir. Please, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you, Mr. Walker. You, you spoke about joining forces of the Turkey countries, but it already uh, happened, although it's a little bit named because two countries are missing. Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan, but uh, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan have Turkey, and they have formed the Turkey Council. So uh, our forces are uh, more or less joined. And of course, uh, one of the aims of the uh, Nakhchivan Agreement is to contribute to the regional stability through regional ownership, knowing our responsibilities. Secondly, economic cooperation, enhanced economic cooperation, not only among ourselves, but also with the other actors of the region. So uh, we are now concentrating on development of transport and in other areas as well. We, for example, of course, with respect to culture, we have founded the Turkic Academy in Astana. Four countries are joining to form and establish an academy and then to support uh, cultural activities, cultural heritage fund in Baku, etc., etc. But the the aim, the aim is, the aim is uh, to have good relations with all the neighbors. And one of the approaches, the main approach of the Turkey Council is the Turkey Council should develop the relations both within itself and with the other countries without infringing upon the, uh, upon the commitments, the already existing commitments of the member states. So it's quite liberal with quite high uh, expectations. Now, with, with respect to, uh, you know, transport, with respect to transport, we also intend to, it will be a multi, multi-modal transport, we also intend to attract Chinese transit from Northwest China through railroad, through road, we are developing Caspian uh, crossings, and uh, with Marmaray under Istanbul, uninterrupted, just traveling 8,000 kilometers, the Chinese group will be able to reach or vice versa. Of course, uh, we have to be on, uh, as we have to maintain good relations with all the countries. For example, uh, Iran is always mentioned, but you should not forget that Iran is our neighbor and 40,000 trucks pass to and fro through the territory of Iran, joining Turkey with the rest of Central Asia. Thank you, it's not a question, but sorry. I guess that's the prerogative as an ambassador. Let me turn it back to the panel real quickly for other people. If you can catch my eye, raise your hand. I'll start there. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Chairman uh, Sayadov, and I think we'll just sit here and just kind of respond. Uh, thank you very much for these questions, and I think that especially concerning the peaceful resolution of the conflict between uh, Azerbaijan and Armenia. Of course, yes. No doubt that we are looking for peace, and I think that in future we will be able to manage that. But you know, the problem is that we are sitting in front of each other and we are representative of one Azerbaijan, but three Armenia are existing, not one Armenia. Armenia as a neighboring country, people like we, they are living, 
they are looking for peace, except some politicians who created a lot of headaches and problematic issues for their own nation. And the second Armenia is existing. Armenia as a diaspora, very strong, influential, and state which sometimes has absolutely different agenda than Armenia as a state. But unfortunately, third Armenia is existing. Armenia as a tool in the, hand, in the hands of the superpower or regional superpower to manipulate and to show who is a must in the region. And with whom we should negotiate? When we start to negotiate with first Armenia, immediately second Armenia protested. A few, few days ago, some representative of second Armenia protested us in Sacramento. We don't understand why. We came as a friends. And I, I want to express my gratitude to my friend. They said, we're allied to United States of America. We came with peace. They protested those who came with peace, which is not understandable. When we start to establish relationship with the second one, the third Armenia started to create some obstacles and problematic issues. That's why we should take into account that the status quo which is existing is not acceptable. I fully agree with this remark. But we should understand that Azerbaijan today is an independent state. And Azerbaijan very consciously came to United States of America and to the rest of the world to establish relationships, normal bilateral relationships. But Armenia is not an independent country. And that's a problem, why the conflict is still exists. Not because they are not able to find the decision of, the, I mean, co-chairman of the Minsk Group. This is the first question. And the second one about the young generation, I will be very brief. You're absolutely right, uh, Joshua, that uh, young generation is our future. And today, all things which we are doing, not because of oil and not for oil, but because for young generation. And I'm so proud to say that the president of Azerbaijan has adopted the special program to change black oil, black gold, into the human gold. And today among you, very many young students are sitting who are represented Azerbaijan and started some scientists here because of oil, but not for oil, but for future of Azerbaijan. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thanks. Um, why, why don't I take that question first? I think the one that Josh posed about uh, people-to-people -people, uh, contacts in the next generation that Chairman Seedoff, I think, addressed very, very well. Uh, we would like to see more uh, young Americans experience uh, present-day Azerbaijan as students, as, as exchange program participants, uh, uh, as uh, even, uh, even as tourists, just to experience a different part of the world and a different way of looking at the world. And we would like to have more uh, young Azerbaijanis here in the United States. And this is a goal we've set for ourselves, despite the fact that our own uh, budgets for exchange programs and other such activities are under a little stress right now, but we're prioritizing that. And um, we're glad to see that the government of Azerbaijan is prioritizing scholarships and efforts to fund uh, the opportunities for Azerbaijani students and young people to experience the world outside their borders. And I hope uh, in coming years we can work together to increase the numbers in both directions. I think that's really, really important. Um, let me then take the second question. I think the reason that we are so committed to uh, getting past the status quo and making real progress and actually seeing a resolution of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict is not solely for humanitarian reasons, although they're very important. It's not solely for political and legal reasons, although those are important. Um, it's also because of the potential uh, that Azerbaijan has as a real hub, as a real focal point for uh, literally the, the central part of two continents. And if you look at the map on the back page of your program for this event, uh, it, it's very, very clear just looking at that location. As I, I said earlier, Azerbaijan didn't choose its location. There are some downsides to its location, definitely, but there's also enormous potential. And it's really important that there be a just and fair uh, settlement, in part to unlock some of the locked up potential of, of Azerbaijan as a, as a real 
uh, center for development of both Europe, Eurasia, and also uh, Asia. And I think uh, looking at the question of of getting a settlement as a priority, I, I would like to briefly respond to Ambassador Silmov to say uh, we will have a full-time uh, envoy and Minsk Group co-chair uh, very soon. Uh, our previous co-chair retired uh, after a very long and distinguished career, and uh, we will not just appoint anyone. It has to be the right person. So uh, that is a priority. Uh, it will uh, happen soon, and I can tell you that uh, this administration and our new secretary, uh, John Kerry, have made it a very uh, very high priority. Uh, the Secretary has identified this as one of the issues that he wishes to personally pursue uh, in uh, his first year, and uh, we are insisting on being optimistic about the possibility of progress. Uh, the, the cliche that uh, the status quo is not acceptable is a cliche, but it, it's very much true. So is, is the expression that failure is not an option. I, I don't think we can allow this to go on. Uh, much longer the way it is. It is bad for the, 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 suffer, the suffering people who 20 years later uh, are, are still uh, suffering, but also for, for both countries, for the entire region. So that is a, a very strong commitment. I, I think it's possible. I also think uh, that uh, this is an area where uh, if we need to, we, we need to call on everyone to bring creativity uh, and bring a readiness uh, to go the extra mile, as we say in American English, to, to achieving that, that just and fair and lasting settlement. Uh, it, it's just so critical in so many ways. Thanks. Thank you. Um, on people to people, I was, well, actually our delegation is doing just that. They traveled to Texas, previously traveled to Arkansas, to Mississippi, um, and then they went to California. In fact, those are the people to people relationships. I, Myself, personally, just came back from uh, Toledo, Ohio, and I know presidential candidates usually go to Toledo, Ohio uh, uh, the month before the election to know whether they're going to win or lose. I actually spent two years in Toledo, Ohio, and it was the formative years of my perception of the United States. I think that's a very important trip for me. It was a homecoming because I went to my university where I got my first master's in the United States. And it's an interesting thing. I will reinforce what uh, Secretary Rubin said, because one of the sad things, I went there as a Muskie fellow. Today I hear that the Maskey Fellowship is being defunded. It's, it's actually very unfortunate because it was a very good tool to bring people together and work on that. In that respect, I would really uh, thank uh, Chairman Saeed in his capacity as the president of the university, uh, who actually created an American cultural center at his university and brings together Azerbaijani students and American students, and they work together to re realize each other. It's a great work they do. Uh, Mr. Saeed mentioned something we're kind of used to now, the, uh, the president's, President Aliyev's program of turning black gold into human gold. But we should not forget that, remember in the 1990s, people got used to very quickly to the idea that happiness is a multiple pipelines. And you know, we did it. It actually worked. So I'm very hopeful that our project on turning black gold into human gold will work. Now, one point I want to make is that independent and sovereign Azerbaijan is the best way to give opportunities to our youth. Just look around. Look at my embassy folks, my colleagues at the embassy. Look at the representative of Sokar here. Those are young people. Young people. That young Azerbaijan, strong Azerbaijan provides opportunities for its citizens. The stronger, the more independent, the more sovereign is the Republic of Azerbaijan, the more opportunities our citizens have, our younger citizens have, to make their choices and to be a part of the society, of a civil society, of a government institutions, of public sector or the private sector. And I think that speaks for itself. And just if you look at the people, I mean, and I have to commend our parliament as well, um, of course, a very young gentleman, uh, Mr. Saidev, is, is here, but even younger deputy of his is also here. So we, we, see, yeah, so we see this uh, uh, process going to the entire system of the Azerbaijani government, you could see that. Now, on one point, um, so you, you, point, uh, you raised a question. I think it was somewhat turned around. The hindrance to Turkish-Armenian relationship is the Armenia's occupation of Azerbaijani territories. The reason uh, Turkey actually had open borders with Armenia, everything was okay until Armenia occupied nagorno karabakh uh, region, and 20 years ago, to date, the United Nations Security Council called for Armenia withdrawal from the occupied territories. That's, that's, that's when Turkey closed its borders. And that's what happened. Now, 
our vision is not to be a hindrance to anybody. We do not uh, control Turkey. Turkey is an independent, strong nation. As a leader in the region, they can make their own decisions. The question is different. Our vision is inclusive of everybody in the region. If you look at Azerbaijan's work with Georgia, Azerbaijan's work with Turkey, you could see it's a great success of integration. The choice is in Armenia. Whether Armenia actually wants to be a part of the region, they can, and the key to that is to, the, to solving, the, oh, not even the solving, at least beginning to solve the conflict within Armenia and Azerbaijan. I mean, we're not talking about the full solution, it's we're talking about not a single inch of territory has been, has been moved. Uh, since uh, in the last 20 years. Not a single refugee has returned home. I mean, th this is a, generations of people grew up in, a, in the camps and we see Azerbaijan as a hindrance. Uh, that, is, that is a very um, strange way to put it. I would also add that not only do we want to see Turkish and Armenian border open, we want to see Azerbaijani and Tur Armenian border open. We want to see the whole region open and integrated. But in order to do that, once again, we need to see a peaceful solution to the Armenia-Azerbaijan conflict. It's not that difficult. Armenian leaders know it. We know it's on the table. I'm very happy to hear that we will soon have a full-time uh, co-chair from the United States. That, that solution is on the table. It's not difficult. Uh, it's easily solvable. So I think we could actually... I'm, I'm very hopeful that we'll see it uh, move forward very soon. And no, Azerbaijan does not control Turkey, and I'm very proud that uh, apparently nobody can control Turkey because it's such a strong country, it's a great leader, and we are eternally grateful to our brothers and sisters in Turkey for standing by Azerbaijan in the difficult days and the good days, and we were, we were confident that that friendship and brotherhood and fraternity will continue uh, for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. David? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to, to Michael for, for pointing out that, that uh, I was remiss in, in thanking um, our, our host, uh, particularly the Turquoise Council. Just three very, very quick. The, the people to people, I'm, I'm big on education, and I think that, that more uh, students uh, from Azerbaijan here and, and, and more American students in Azerbaijan would, would, would go a long way. I, I, Echo what the ambassador said. Where what I've seen over over you know the 20 years, and I've really seen a concentration of it more recently, is groups like this are reaching out to members of Congress, members of state legislature, um, really exercising their their own um, uh, wherever they live, organizing and, and, and doing much much more. On, on the youth, what I find most important about Azerbaijan is that the youth are excited about their future in Azerbaijan. Um, contrast this to the Middle East, where you have uh, a region that is more unstable than perhaps at any time since the breakup of the Ottoman Empire. Um, it's, it's unclear uh, whether it's going to go towards greater chaos or greater democracy, but what is clear is that it's got a rough road uh, in the years ahead. So I think that's very important. Uh, on on Nagorno-Karabakh, I just want to make one more point. I think that, that too often, and it happened again here, we talk about Nagorno-Karabakh as an opportunity cost. If it was solved, uh, then, then, then Azerbaijan, Armenia could fully um, uh, realize their potential. It's more than an opportunity cost. It's a present cost, and it could be a greater cost if, if things went bad. Um, I, I am very excited by what uh, Eric said about this being a priority uh, for the, the Secretary of State. If, if it's possible uh, for the Secretary of State to, to use some of his time, his personal capital uh, on this issue, I think it would be very, very good. Um, we, we went through Florida, then Rombule, then Kazan, and I think it's now time uh, for the United States uh, to again take a leadership position to resolve this situation. And I think that that requires more than, uh, fulfill, more than filling our, our, our Minsk group spot. I think that that takes uh, real U.S. leadership uh, in a way that we would be able to talk to Moscow uh, to really resolve this situation. Uh, and if that's the Secretary of State, I can't imagine a better solution. Uh, minus the Secretary of State's uh, personal time because of other things going on in Iraq and Syria, North Korea, uh, then I really think you need a, a high-level uh, envoy uh, to organize this behind U.S. leadership. Thank you.
Uh, thanks, Josh, and uh, I'll be brief, but uh, what David said was something I was going to say, too. My, on my visit uh, to Azerbaijan, that feeling you get from the young people there, how positive they are, uh, needs to be stated again. Uh, when, in New York, I met a young man named Hussein Panahov, uh, who had studied at the military academy uh, in West Point, graduated and went back uh, to Baku. And when I went and visited him there in Baku, and saw him still a very, you know, very proud Azerbaijani and very proud of his country, but what an ambassador he was for America. And I saw him speak to young people from the university, and really just the investment that was made in educating him and having him as a, as a lifetime ambassador for America. We all know how important that is, and we have to continue it. I also want to add that um, for America, but relations with Azerbaijan are so important, but the lesson of Azerbaijan to the American people, the fact that you have a, a Muslim nation, a Shia Muslim nation, that values democracy and values its relationship with us is something that we have to also focus on as America tries to, needs to better educate itself. I think we all agree that Americans as to the conditions in the world. And lastly, I would submit that we need to uh, make uh, the uh, ability to travel between our two countries easier. Uh, a visa waiver uh, plan would be a very good thing because it is, I can tell you now as a private citizen, it's not that easy to go and travel. You have to plan way ahead in getting visas and I know it's back. I have met friends there who want to come and visit and because of the visa restrictions, they can't come and so that's something we have to work on as well. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I've learned in Turkish culture, trying to stand between hungry guests and their food is always a bad thing, but the organizers have asked for one last indulgence, and when we thank the, the panel, they're going to then turn over to a video that they, Azerbaijan video, they'd like us to see. So let's thank our panel, and then we'll turn at that, and we'll see each other at lunch. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much.